Speaking of the buffer, um, you know, something that I think a lot of people try to use is like Western privilege or international privilege, right? And trying to be buffers. Um, of course, the question is how much that works, given what happened to Rachel Corey, Eichner, obviously, who we can talk about. You yourself were shot, um, luckily not fatally. And not to mention, of course, the countless Palestinians who never make it into the news. But can you talk about what happened to you and how the government, uh, Uncle Sam, responded, given that you know Joe Biden has promised that if you hurt an American, mm. there's going to be a response? Uh, that guy. OK, so, <laughs> so yeah. So um, me and Liar, we went to the protest. It happens every Friday in Beta. Uh, the Palestinians are just trying to get back to their uh, land that a uh, settlement's built on, the Ivatar sell settlement. And it starts out with a Juma prayer, uh, without incident. And then, well, even before um, we started chanting, uh, the IOF was pointing their guns at us, like three to four people, soldiers up there. And um, right after the Juma prayer, that's when they um, shot tear gas at us few more rounds, and then the live rounds started happening. So we hid behind a concrete wall, um, maybe like 15 of us at that point, 20, and we just waited out some tear gas, some live rounds, see the dust coming off the concrete walls. And then I think the Palestinians thought they were coming closer, so we ran. Uh, we ran over a concrete wall, or jumped over a concrete wall, climbed it really. And then we just were far, far in the distance. We kind of came back, we had to wait until it was safe because there's Palestinians running down the hill that we were just going up on for the, for the demonstration. And then we were able to go to our right. There was a little coffee break, <laughs> some duhan smoke, smoke break. Um, so coffee and tea for like five minutes. Some Palestinians went to our right and that was the foot of the, I guess, uh, hill where the, the IOF were. And, and people probably yeah. know this, but IOF is uh, Israeli Occupation Forces instead yeah. of calling them the Israeli Defense Forces. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Thank you. And uh, so there's tear gas shot at us, live rounds again. But eventually, um, there's Palestinians to our left uh, that were running towards us and then behind us through the olive grove. So. Um, going through the olive grove, just making sure my, my friends were safe, my comrades, the Palestinians. And I think I was the last one going down. And right when I stepped down, that's when I heard a loud bang. And, um, and then I, I thought it was um, a tear gas canister because it felt like someone just hit me with a blunt object. I was still running because I didn't want to get shot. And... Um, Comrade of ours uh, helped me out of, into the clearing. And then once I was in the clearing, that's when the Palestinians lifted me up, brought me to the pickup truck, and then to the uh, emergency clinic in Beta. Then they transferred me to an ambulance. And then um, after being blocked by the IOF with their trucks, after two other checkpoints, and making sure that you know, they saw who was inside, um, finally got to Rafidia Hospital, where I got my care, so. And how did the U.S. respond to this, your government? Ah, uh, man. Are they my government? They, they don't care about Ostensibly, right? our lives, right? Aishinoor's life. Um, so the embassy reached out to me, and um, so they wanted a report, gave them a report. Um, and then eventually, because I didn't want to go to the, I don't know, it, it had to be a settlement or go to Israel, you know, 48. So I didn't want to do that. And I also didn't had a limited amount of time. Um, I was healing. I got out of the hospital. So I wrote the report and then stayed in Palestine for the whole period uh, that I um, decided to for the two weeks and left. I didn't want to go and meet them and, you know, be gaslit or what have you. So... Um, they sent the report. They said they're going to follow up, give me updates. No updates, except for they sent it. <laughs> so that's the only update I got from the embassy. When I got here, 
nothing from the State Department. I think they put out a notice. We are aware of a U.S. citizen uh, shot. Um, we have an advisory that people should not go there, you know. Um, and that was it. So no State Department reached out after that. Uh, we had a politician reach out, um, but I didn't want to meet him unless he was going to meet with Americans for Justice in Palestine, uh, which I lobbied with, um, and he didn't meet with us. So we talked to the staffer, but um, I didn't give him my personal information uh, because I wanted him to meet with us because I don't want him to say some empty sorry. His name is Cory Booker, if y'all know. Oh, him. I was going to ask. So. Okay, nice. <laughs> You're on notice, Cory Booker. Okay. Yeah. So Big Zionist. Until he agrees to meet with the group, then I'm not meeting with him. So. Okay. Yeah, um, but that's that's the extent of our government's care. Even though Biden said, you know, if he harm if you harm a U.S. citizen, um, we're going to act right. Whether it was me, Ishanur, we see the inaction, we see the repetition of the lies. Uh, Israel said it was a mistake, it was a warning shot, but warning shots go up and down, not through someone's leg. And for Ishanur, uh the disgusting lie of, oh, it ricocheted off the ground into her head, right? Um, so, yeah, we just, we see how, um, also when an um, IOF soldier was killed, right? They put it all over the news, right? Um, I don't know if he was a hostage, but, um, right, he uh, was touted all over the news. He died, right? But what about Aishinor, right? Um, another U.S. citizen, so... And did you know Eichner? Did either of you know her? No, I didn't. Um, it was her second day on the ground. Right. It was like just like me, right? My second day on the ground, and I was shot. It was her second day. You and, did say, yeah. I heard in an interview, um, that you think that maybe if the U.S. had handled your shooting differently, she would still be alive. Can you just explain what you meant by that? Then I'll bring you this. Yeah. Um, yeah, if the U.S. put any pressure on Israel... Um, maybe they would see different change. So when Eichner, um was shot and murdered, uh, we saw, uh, I, from what I heard, um, they did block off where people were protesting, but there was no tear gas, no live rounds, right? So with that kind of uh, de-escalation, um, though they're still occupying the land, you know, there's still military presence there where, where there shouldn't be, um, you know, for the Palestinians there, right, 17 were murdered since October 7th in Beta. Um, maybe it would look different, right? Maybe they'd be more cautious in how they um, roll, but um, it's not the case, right? Because there was no press coverage when I was shot, and it took someone's death to even have some kind of de-escalation, um, which I'm sure right now it's going back. I heard that they have, instead of single um, tear gas canister, um, shooters, right? Uh, launchers, they have multiple ones now. So, you know, um, they'll just slowly ramp back up because they know they can get away with it. And what is your your prognosis for your recovery? I have to go to the doctor. I've been teaching, man. I, it's so hard. To, you know, like just balance everything with interviews and events. Um, but, you know, and calling out of work for certain things. But um, I I can walk pretty well. Um, I've gone to the marches, um, but I just don't know if I can run or bike yet, I, so I just have to like talk to the doctor. It feels good, but I don't really know yet. <laughs> He's downplaying how lucky he is. Uh, so the, the bullet entered the, the leg here and came out here, but it missed the bone and it missed the femoral artery. So he's like incredibly, you're incredibly lucky. Probably like the luckiest dude I've ever met. <laughs> if it had hit the femoral artery, I mean, you would I'd be been dead. gone, right? You'd yeah. be gone. Like, because they didn't, it's not like they had people, like they the life saving, right? But I assume yeah. it wouldn't have been easy to get to a. Yeah, I mean, with the, the, with the checkpoints yeah. and the blocking us from getting to the hospital, if that was the case, within that time frame, I'd probably have died.